It's an honor to participate in this program, the Zecher Nishmas, the Nova Minsker Zatzal, and also for Rafu Shalema for all the Cholim of COVID-19. Today we're going to analyze a number of Mechiltas, and Rashi quotes them. Everyone is familiar with them. And what I'd like to share with you is a number of ideas that were taught 50 years ago. 50 years ago this month, Rabbi Soloveitchik gave three shiurim to the Jewish community in Boston. And we're going to take some of those ideas to prepare us for Shavuos, for Matan Torah. Here's the issue. We call the, ta- the topic the most anticlimactic moment in Jewish history. Why such a difficult, uh, such a disparaging term of Shavuos, of Matan Torah? The reason why is, for over a year, since the fugitive return from Saudi Arabia, Moshe Rabbeinu came back. He spent decades, decades as a fugitive. We have Midrashim that say that he was involved in running the country in Kush, in Central Africa, and he transformed that society and civilization. Then he served as a CEO for his father-in-law's business, the cattle business. His father-in-law had thousands of head of sheep and cattle, and Moshe Rabbeinu oversaw that. And you're all familiar with what happens at the SNE. When Moshe returns from the SNE and he tries to engage the people, over the course of the next year in Mitzrayim or more, the Jewish people start to learn, start to become educated. They start to reject the Vodazara, adopt ethical monotheism. They offer the Korban Pesach. The erech misposesas bidamayich, your bloods. What are the two bloods? Dam mila, dam korban pesach. So they recommit themselves to the covenant. As they leave Mitzrayim, most of the seven weeks were not traveling. They were learning and becoming educated. At Mara, Mishpatim, labor laws. What are we, how are we going to do things different? Are we going to treat our employees different than the way the Mitzrayim treated us? Shabbos. They get a taste of chukim, towards some damages, a whole selection of the mitzvahs. If you add up the mitzvahs that took place in Mishpatim, in Shabbos, in Paraduma, in the mitzvahs they had in Mitzrayim, they really get a sense of what Yiddishkeit is like. And then they come to Sinai. Vayichan sham Yisrael neged ahar, the theme of today. They're ready to engage in a covenant. According to the French and German Rishonim, they are going to be leaving the status of being B'nai Noach. After all, Moshe Rabbeinu married a Saudi Arabian woman. He married a Midianite. How can he do that? Because according to the French and German Rishonim, they were B'nai Noach. B'nai Noach who had adopted certain other mitzvot. But categorically, religiously, they were B'nai Noach. There was one religion on earth. Now they're going to convert to this system of perfected ethical monotheism. It's not just that, well, the B'nai Noach have seven macro categories and B'nai Yisrael has 613. It's not just seven versus 613. Perfected ethical monotheism means they're gonna become partners. It's a bris, it's a covenant with a Kodesh Baruch Hu. They're gonna be his partners. Not only are they gonna become perfected, but they're gonna become a mamleches koanim. What does that mean, mamleches koanim? a nation of role models, a nation of mentors, a nation of teachers and educators who are gonna transform the destiny of humanity. So they're ready. They're ready now. They've prepared for the conversion. The Korban has taken place. Tefillah has taken place. Mila, as we said, took place in Mitzrayim. They're ready for this great monumental movement where they become a unique, distinct religion. Goya Chod Ba'aretz. And what happens? Vayidaber Elohim is kol hadvarim ha'ela lemor. Where am I quoting from? The beginning of Perik Chaf. Perik Chaf and Shmos. Elohim, Hashem spoke, kol hadvarim ha'ela. What are kol hadvarim ha'ela? Lemor. So Rashi says, and, and please have in mind this, the word kol, we always translate it into English as all. Kol can mean one of two things. It can mean all of the discrete, distinct units, or it can mean an organic entity. I'll give you an example. Is everyone here? Who's everyone? Are are all six members or all eight members of the family here? 
That's one definition of call. Call means my whole, my body, my whole body. What's my whole body? It's not two eyes and two ears and two kidneys and a liver. No, it's an organic entity. And Rashi teaches us, and Rashi's quoting the Mechilta, the Medrash Halacha and Sefer Shmos, that call here means the complete entity. What did Hashem do? The best word in English is a cacophony. Hashem presented a cacophony, something that is impossible to comprehend. Those of you who have multiple children or multiple grandchildren, can you comprehend when everyone's talking at once? All you hear is noise. But that's kol hadvari ma'ila. They're waiting for a unique covenant. And the first thing they hear from Hashem is, is this cacophony of noise? And then he has to go back. Anochi Hashem Elokecha v'gomer. Lo yiyalecha Elohim acherim v'gomer. He has to go through the specific of each ten of the Decalogue. Well, if he has to go back and repeat and explain each one because they didn't hear it the first time, why say it the first time? What is that? And what the Mechilta that Rashi quotes is teaching us the following. And this is very profound. Why did Hashem do that? Hashem said, for you to become this Mamleches Kohanim, you can't pick and choose. It's an organic entity. A Jew who observes the Bein Adam Lamakom without the Bein Adam Lechavero is not a Jew. And a Jew that's Bein Adam Lechavero without Bein Adam Lamakom is not a Jew. It's not a people, it's not a Torah, it's not a covenant. And, and let's elaborate. We all know the, 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 what we refer to as a chil Hashem. You have someone who puts on Rashi and Rabbeinu Tam six days a week. Someone who's very makbid and glad kosher. Only eats chal of Yisrael. But you do business with them? Forget it. You want to try to collect from them? Forget it. Do they pay their taxes? Do they pay employees off the books? That's not Judaism. That's not the Torah. And you have a situation like that, people despise Jews. They hate Jews for that. That's a religion of sensitivity that acknowledges itself on Elohim. That's a terrible, terrible, terrible Chil Hashem. And we've been hit by that Chil Hashem many times throughout our history. But at the same time, what about this person, we used to call him, we, we tease, we called him the cardiac Jews. I'm a Jew at heart. I'm a good in the Shema. These Jews, they would give you the shirt off their back. They would take care of you. They'd feed you. They'd look after you. You could trust your life with them. You could trust your assets with them. Impeccable integrity. But there's no Shabbos. There's no Kashrus. There's no Talmud Torah. Nah, I, I don't need that. I'm a good person. What happens with those Jews? When there's no Anochi Hashem Elokecha, representing the first of the Bein Adam Lamakom, then by definition there's no, no, there's no Lo Tirzach. And there's lo, no Lo Tignov. What do you mean Lo Tirzach? Isn't that the basis of ethics? These people would never kill. Yes, they would. And you and I know that. In the name of euthanasia, in the name of, of compassion, in the name of moral sensitivity, they commit murder every day. Why? This person didn't want to live. They wrote a will, a living will, a tzava, that said, don't allow me to live like a vegetable. I don't want to do that to my children. I don't want to live like that. I don't want the medical system to pay for those kind of expenses. And as is the case in life, we cannot choose how we're going to go. In Nebuch, 911 is called, the person had a stroke. They don't know the extent with this. They don't know that it was a stroke for sure. All they do is they start with the oxygen. They put the person on a machine. And now when they do the tests, it's determined that it was a massive stroke and there's serious brain damage. Now with a case like that, it's too late. Person's already on respiration, on a respirator. Can't pull the plug, that's murder. They say yes. Because not only are we going to pull the plug, 
What we're going to do is we're going to save society. We're going to serve, save the, the children anguish. We're going to save the, that person from their, their living will being violated. Lo tirtach, all in the name of compassion. That's the problem with someone who just adopts the Bein Adam L'chavero and does not observe the Bein Adam L'makam. That's the problem with that. Shem says, stay B'nai Noach. Stay like everyone else. You can lead a very perfected life as B'nai Noach. Avraham, Sarah, Yitzchak, Rivka, Yosef. These were B'nai Noach. But if you want to be B'nai Yisrael, you adopt the whole system. The Kol Hadvarim, the organic entity. That's the first point. And if you accept that, if you say yes, then we can go into all the specifics. What is the last word in that Pasuk? Lemor. As you know, Lemor is an infinitive. To say, the, the most common Pasuk in the Torah, V'yadaber Hashem el Moshe Lemor. Hashem communicated these ideas to Moshe. What's Lemor? To say them over to Klal Yisrael to teach them to the nation. This is not a private idea, but I'm giving you a matir. What's the matir? The chiyu, the obligation to teach the nation. This is, this is our ideas. These are principles that are meant to be communicated. Okay. Here's the thing. Here's the issue. That works with the rest of the Torah. But here at Har Sinai, Moshe Rabbeinu was with us. It's not like it was a communication to Moshe and then Moshe turned around and taught the people. We, along with Moshe, perceived this body of knowledge. We perceived Anochi Hashem Elokecha V'gomer. We perceived Lo Yia Lecha Elohim Acherim V'gomer. We perceived it. Moshe was with us. What's the laymore? What's the laymore? So Rashi, here, on his Peyush in the Chumash, and the Rambam, the Rambam in his famous introduction to his commentary, to his Perish HaMishnayus on Avos, it's called the Shmona Prakim. Rashi and the Rambam quote half the Mechilta. And the, the half the Mechilta they quote is the opinion of Rabbi Yishmael. What does Rabbi Yishmael say? What is Lamor? A covenant means what? It's a two-way relationship. It takes two to tango. It's a two-way relationship. So it's not just Hashem communicating. We have to agree. We have to adopt the system. So listen to what Rashi quotes, the Mechilta. Milamed. What does Lamor mean? Shahayu Onin. They, the Jews would respond to Hashem after each of the Dibros. al hain hain the al lav lav. What does that mean, al hain hain Meaning, the mitzvos which they are to accept the Beit Adam Lamakoms, yes, God, we accept this. al yes, Hashem, we accept this. And on the Beit Adam L'chavero, the Losa says, don't murder, don't kidnap, don't engage in adultery, don't covet. What's the response? Not Hain, not yes, God, yes, Hashem, we accept this, but no, we would never do this. Allah, Allah, no, we are not going to violate that. What's the difference between the Kabbalah of Hain? They're Lamor. They say back to Hashem. Here the Lamor is not Moshe to the people, because Moshe is one of us. Here the Lamor is, they respond back to Hashem after he communicates. Hain, and we'll call it the theological. Lav, on the ethical moral. The Bein Adam L'chavero. What is that? So the Rav explained, he gave an analogy. Imagine this situation. You've got a young kid. Let's say the kid's seven, eight years old. So there's some comprehension, there's some cognitive ability there. When that kid wants to go in for ice cream or into the cookie jar or for the candies, and you say, no, you're only allowed one candy, only one cookie, and that's only after dinner. This is yes, Tati. Yes, Mommy. It's not because they believe that or they're committed to it. It's because they accept the yoke of their parents. They revere their parents. They know their parents set the rules and they accept the ruler. 
But how about this? Again, it's seven, eight years old, and the ball goes in the street. And mother or father says, don't go into the street. Oh no, I wouldn't do that. I'm not going into the street. It's not just they're accepting mom and daddy. They know that going into the street is a dangerous thing. They know they could be killed by an automobile. They could be run over. They're aware of that. They're, they have that, that level of comprehension. The reason they're not going in the street after the ball, they're gonna wait and they're gonna have someone look both sides clearly, then go get the ball, is because they understand at that point how serious it could be. That's why they're doing it, because it's in their kishkas. Not the case when it comes to the cookie jar or the candies. Leave the masha, let's go to us. What Rabbi Ishmael is teaching us what is the nature of our relationship with Hashem? What is the nature of our relationship to the mitzvahs? And Rabbi Yishmael is saying there's a two-tier. There are two strata. When it comes to, let's give the example of kashras, none of us say that pork or bacon is disgusting. No. Rashi clearly says that in the Chumash. We do it because it's the will of the Almighty. There are certain mammals that are kosher, certain that are not. Why do we keep shotness? Not because it's disgusting to have a leather border in our collar to keep the suit in shape in a wool suit. It's not disgusting, it's not terrible, we don't despise it. We accept the will of Hashem. Now, through Tame mitzvos, we, we describe how we relate to it, how we experience it. We don't know why Hashem gave it to us. We just know that we are servants of Hashem and we abide by His will. We abide by the will of the infinite even if we don't comprehend the will of the infinite. That's Hain. That's how you accept the theological. Paraduma, Kashris, Chatnes, many others. Why this Korban is two days and this Korban is one day? Why it's Yerushalayim and not Haifa? Makam HaMikdash. All of that we accept the will of the divine. When it comes, Rabbi Yishmael says, to the ethical, to the moral, you don't sit in Clara Chakir when an elderly person is crossing the street. Do I have a chiyuv to go and help them? Am I being mekayim a mitzvah? No, it's gotta be intuitive. You wanna intuitively jump and help and do chesed. You wanna intuitively help someone. You intuitively recoil from Lashon Hara, recoil from Geneva, recoil from cheating on taxes, recoil from, 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 from arrogance. That should be the persona of the Jew. Of course it's a mitzvah from Hashem, but the motivating factor should be that, that it shaped our persona, it shaped our very gavra, the, you know, in terms of who we are, our worldview, how we see the world, that, that is just who we are intuitively. We're not doing it because of our servitude to the divine. We're doing it because we despise Lashon Hara. We despise Onas Devarim, abusive speech. We despise ill gain, Geneva, Onas Mammon. And that's the Rambam teaching us how to view the world, how to view our relationship with Hashem. And that's Rashi here. He doesn't quote Rabbi Yishmael, but it's the first half of that Mechilta. It's Shitas Rabbi Yishmael. The Rav said, if you look up the Mechilta, there's a second Shita, Rabbi Akiva. What does Lemor mean? Lemor is Melamed. Hashem gave each of the Dibros. And what did the Klai Yisrael say back to Hashem? Again, two parties in the covenant. What was our response, our commitment to the covenant? Rabbi Akiva says, Melamed shehayu onin al hein hein va'alav hein. Not just on the theological, the Bein Adam Lemakom, but on the ethical moral, the Bein Adam Lechavero. You know what the Jews, you know what, you know what our commitment to the Torah is? You know what our commitment to mitzvot is, to Hashem is? Yes, Hashem. Yes, Ribbono Sha'olam. We accept it. Very different. Not just by Bein Adam Lemakom, but even by not murdering, not speaking Lashon Hara. And it goes back to what we said before. 
Remember Dr. Jack Kevorkian? He used to call himself the angel of death. A, a physician assisted suicide. So eventually Kevorkian was put behind bars when he took someone who was suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome in their late 20s and he took them to the Red Roof Inn and murdered them there. But it was very interesting. The medical community in Michigan who despised him because he's a person who desired and craved the attention in the media. They said, what do you think we've been doing? What do you think we've been doing for years? You have this situation like we described and they're sitting there. And we tell the kids who are crying, who are, who are beating themselves up because the one thing that the parent requested of them is don't let me live like this. So that's all right. You don't have to pull the plug. We're gonna take the morphine drip and we're gonna expedite the drip but the morphine will basically shut down the liver, shut down respiration, shut down the heart, and they're gonna die in a trance, never feeling a thing. If it's all about my feeling and who I am and I, I recoil, I despise this. Well, tragically, there are times in life where we don't despise that, where you have a culture that that's trained is, is that's mercy. And, and I'm using the most drastic example of Lotirtzach. We can find multiple scenarios. The First Amendment. What do you mean, Lushen Hara? What do you mean I can't say it? I have a responsibility to tell the world. Free press. Everything under the license of a free press, right? Wrong. You can have a whole mentality and a whole culture where you think that this is the right thing to do and this is the ethical thing to do. You know why we observe lo tirtzach and not speaking Lashon Hara? For the same reason we keep kashris and the same reason we keep shatnes. Because it's the will of the divine. Whether it fits our worldview, whether it doesn't fit our worldview. We, our worldview is shaped by the will of the divine. And they're very difficult. Can you imagine the, 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 you know, the cathartic the heroic action that is required for someone who's just lost a loved one. They went to the funeral in the afternoon Erev Pesach. And that person in a few hours is going to turn around and have a Seder and make a Shechiyanu and sing the Halal Hodu Lashem Kitov. Is that within the natural perspective of a person when they can't show the dignity? by sitting a, sh a full shiva for their parent, when they're devastated by the loss of their parent, that's a divine will. That's why Rabbi Akiva says, what is Lamor? Melame chahayu onin al hain hain the alav hain. And we're running out of time, but I want to use one last mechilta. And you have a chance to look at it inside over Shavuos. The word Anochi, like as Anochi Hashem Elokecha, who has extricated you, who has liberated you from the land of Egypt. Anochi. How would you say in Hebrew, how would you say the word I? Ani. Ani. From the time we were children, we did. Ani, Atahu. What's Anochi? So understanding this, this subtle nuance in grammar will be able to understand the Mechilta that Rashi quotes. When you say, I'm with you, I'm here, you say, Ani. How about if you're knocking on the door and the person on the other side of the door doesn't know who it is? There's a question of identity. Who is it? Who, who's, who's at the door? It's I, it's me, it is me, I, I'm here. And, and because of the, they don't see you, but your intonation, your voice, oh, okay. Where there's a question as to what is the identity, then you say, I, not ani, anochi. That's how it works in Hebrew grammar. And you'll see this very often. You know this from the Haftorah of the Shiva de Nechemta. Anochi, anochi, hu menachemchen. Here's the anochi as well. Because to paraphrase Rashi, they perceived Hashem as a gibor milchama. The way they perceived Hashem as the mighty warrior, Hashem ish milchama, Hashem shemo at the sea. 
the way they perceived Hashem in Mitzrayim with Marcus Bechoros. But at Harsinai, they perceive Hashem as Zakei Malei Rachamim. Is, is a mentor, is a teacher, is someone who's enlightening, who's opening up vistas. How can this be the same Hashem? That's Anochi. In our life, we perceive Hashem in different modalities. It's one Hashem. It is only one God. There are certain times we perceive the Midas Hadin, other times the Midas Harachimim. In the last century, we perceived Hashem one way from 1939 through 45. In June of 67, we perceived Hashem another way when what we thought was going to be Auschwitz too. And the whole Yishuv was saved from annihilation. The tens of thousands of graves that were dug in preparation in Kibbutz Be'eri and throughout every city, town, and village. In Yerushalayim and Tel Aviv, the parks, they, they, they had a requisition on the parks and they dug thousands of graves there. And it didn't happen. And in fact, a miracle happened. That tiny little Yishu that couldn't exist nine miles wide became defensible. Yerushalayim, the Makomos HaKadoshim, came back to us. Hashem did all of that in days. Sometimes we question. The same Jew that says the Kaddish is Gadavi is Gadash at the grave is the same Jew that says Shechiyano Vikimano Vihiyano. The same Jew that sits on Tisha above in Avelis, every Jew is in Avelis, and says the Kinos is the same Jew that on Yom Tov wears our finest clothing. In Besimcha says a Hallel, Bepeh Male. It's one God. It's one God. We sometimes don't appreciate the subtleties in that Hashkacha manifests itself in multiple ways. Anochi. And that's what Hashem is teaching us. That relationship, the very first mitzvah of the covenant, the very foundation of the covenant, is Anochi. Wishing you a very meaningful, meaningful Shavuos. Thank you. Yeah.